Hello, and welcome to the American Academy Brno podcast. This is me and my sister, and we're the main creators of this podcast. We have some pretty cool schoolmates at our school, and we would like you to get to know them, because, yeah, they're just great, funny, and also smart. We do all sorts of things at American Academy, as you can probably see here, or here. Don't worry, it's not all fun and games. Sometimes we have to study. All of this results in many kinds of mental breakdowns, like this one, or this one. <laughs> and this is what we all feel at the end of the trimester. Yet somehow we still find the time to do dumb things like this. And that's okay, because at the end of the day we're still just a bunch of kids messing around. But like with ambitions and like we're also like kind of smart and stuff. So that's what we sh want to, you know, show off in this podcast. So, great. Hello and welcome to the American Academy in Brno podcast. Today is a very special episode because it's Christmas, as you can see by how we're dressed today. Also, we have some lights up here. And also, it's a special episode because we have uh, Miss Eva here today, a very special guest. So, Miss Eva, if you could maybe tell us uh, what is your position at American Academy? Hello, everyone. Uh, everybody calls me as Miss Eva, and I am the Dean of Students and Faculty at American Academy Brno, and I'm also a teacher. Okay, great. So, the first question is, uh, a very like a basic and simple one. Uh, why are you a teacher at American Academy? Like what was the way? Okay, it's a simple question. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't have a simple answer. So um, I am here because I think education is one of the most important things for uh, society in general and especially for young people. And uh, I think education has to be done the right way. And uh, I have been to some schools in Czech Republic and I never felt like it's been like done the right way. So I left education in like in general, but then I heard about American Academy and I, I was thinking like if there's ever gonna be a school that at least tries to do it the right way, it's gonna be this one. And so what do you think is like uh, the thing that American Academy does right compared to other schools? Because as you mentioned, you like you've been teaching at other schools. So you have like the real comparison. So like what is the one thing that American Academy does better than normal like Check schools? schools? I think the problem with education is that uh, it's like a big wheel that's turning and it started to turn like a long time ago and it's still going in the same direction. But the world is like a lot different and uh, the education, especially in Czech Republic, didn't really change a lot, whereas the world changed tremendously. And I don't think the education in general in Czech Republic reflects that. So we still uh, teach knowledge and we still teach quite the same way we did like 100 of years ago or even 200 years ago. But uh, the world is really different now and we need more skills than knowledge. And we also need to teach students the way that uh, it's attractive for them. And I think those two things are exactly those that American Academy does differently. And, and the problem is that like, it's, it's not easy to, to do changes. And I think that's the, the biggest problem of like Czech education. It's all very hard to change something, especially when you don't know how or what you should do. And a lot of schools just choose the simple way. Whereas we try to find the right way, which is not always a simple way. Okay, so what do you feel like is the 
is important quality for a teacher to to have, like a characteristic for a teacher to have in order to be able to teach well. Like the one quality that a teacher can possess, mm -hmm. like makes them attractive for students. Like a good teacher, like a teacher that can, you know, teach you rather skill than knowledge. I think the essential is in uh, be interested in your students and try to do the best that's the best for them. And if you have this mindset, then you will always be open to do what you should do. Yeah, because like you will see what your students need if you really care about them. And, if, and uh, mindset, you can do everything else. But if you don't have this point, it will never work fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like, if you have not care about your students, then you can be the test, best teacher, you can have the best lectures, but they will always know and it will never work, work well. Um, do you think that it's like important to maybe be like a little more invested in your students in a way that so that you can like, I guess, guide them through both their like student life but maybe sometimes even help them out with like their personal life yeah with, like their personal goals and stuff definitely yes and, and especially with teenagers you, you know i think it's a very like difficult uh time for everyone and for for teenagers like their life is everything and if you don't care about this, then it's like don't, don't care about your students. You just cannot ignore this part of their lives because then it, it just doesn't work. Yeah, if you like, I always like felt that if you really care about your students and try to kind of see uh, things from their point of view, it will make your job easier or like that it's the right way to go you know because if you explain them something from your subject for example and you don't realize that it's just a 15 years old girl that's sitting in your classroom listening to you and at, at the same time when you're talking she, she's probably much more thinking about like her meeting with boyfriend yesterday or what she's gonna wear tonight for her day or like if or how many people liked her last post on Facebook or Instagram, yeah? And like, if, if you think that these things are stupid or not important, you just lost it because you, your social life is so important for you. And to ignore that would be like a big mistake. Yeah, and at the same time that you are also thinking about your big dreams. And that's what's shaping your education. So if like, as a teacher, I'm not interested on, in like your dreams and your future, I'm missing the big goal that you have in your education. So how could I help you if I don't know what you wanna do? Yeah, if I try to educate you to become an engineer, but you want to be an artist, it will never meet and it will never work. So I think to care about the student's life outside of school should be the very first thing you should do. Yeah, and, and with like knowledge about their interests and their lives, you can make even the class more interesting. Okay, that's And good. if nothing else, school, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very big part. Yeah, like school should prepare you for life, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't care about life, why or for what we prepare you if not for life? No, that's great. And I like I see that in your classes a lot and I have seen that in your classes a lot. That's why I wanted to ask you because I feel like you're really like the, just like the perfect like example of a really good teacher. I know that you've, you know, changed a lot of my like personal like views on 
education and stuff. Yeah, definitely. And same. Lot, so, so that's that. But talk, you, you've mentioned like uh, students like dreams and like goals and stuff. And uh, I, I wanted to ask if like a student ever came to you and t- uh, like told you like what their dream was. And if you thought like, okay, that's impossible. I'm just like, I'm going to tell, tell them like, no, this is impossible. This is never going to happen. Like, even if you like do, and even if you like work as much, as hard as you can, it's like, it's not going to happen. Has that ever like happened to you? Uh, to be perfectly honest, no. Yeah, and I think this comes from my coaching experience because uh, that's what I was doing when I was not teaching. I was coaching people and it was very similar. People came to me and, uh, and told me their dreams. And uh, like if I told them, no, this, this is impossible, you cannot do that. That's not why they came to me. They came to me to help, uh, to help them realize their dreams, right? They didn't want to hear that it's impossible. And also I think like everything is possible. Yeah, like look at the history, the human history. Yeah, and look at some of the people that really like did great things. They managed to do that. And usually the only thing that prevent anybody from reaching their goals is themselves. And yes, if they listen too much to people that tell them like it's impossible or that they are not strong enough to, to achieve this, that can stop them from their dreams. So I don't want to be the one that will tell them this. I want to be the one that will tell them you can do it. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Yeah. Like sometimes I, I thought like this is going to be hard, but I never thought that it's impossible. And honestly, I love the most when students tell me like the biggest dreams because that's what's gonna push them forward. So I like, I would feel so bad about myself if I would tell them like, no, this is impossible. That would be like slapping them in, in their face, really. Yeah, I, I guess, but don't you think that maybe sometimes, you know, some people need like a reality check that some people just like need to be a little like grounded about some things that they you know maybe want to achieve because maybe it might like break them if they don't achieve it and they dedicate like their whole life to it so isn't like yeah i think i know when like when you're heading um yes like if you if you meet the reality too soon, it might destroy your dream. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's what I think I can do for my students to help them to find the the way that's realistic, something that will support their dream and not to discourage them. So yeah, if like, if if I see that uh, their way is very hard and I see see how they can make it like easier or more possible i would definitely help them to look for these ways and i have to say i have some pretty big dreams and i know that it's really nice when i like come to you and talk to you about it because you always encourage me which kind of makes me like really go for it after the talk we have and i think that's really nice to have at school to have someone who can like motivate you to really do something about your dream and not to give it up so i really like that thanks yeah and i think this is exactly what you guys need like you will meet so many people that will try to discourage you and like teresa when you ask like the the reality it will definitely come at some points uh so i think you also need someone who will who will tell you that you can do it yeah yeah i guess that's yeah that's i mean that's obviously like true i guess encouragement is like important and stuff we wanted to ask we hear that there is a conference coming about education and we wanted you to tell us something more about it Mm -hmm. 
I found you had okay. <laughs> I think you go more. I do maybe. <laughs> Uh, yes, I have a group of six amazing students and together we plan a conference about education and all of the students are girls, so it's like a girl power. And I saw some conferences lately and to be very honest, I wasn't that excited about their like content after I saw them, but I'm pretty confident of what we can do with, with my girls. And I think it will be really great even. So if anybody wants to like be better teacher, definitely they shouldn't miss our conference. Okay, so uh, I should maybe like explain. So uh, because we are like two of the six girls in uh, it's uh, event management uh, class and we are preparing a conference that is about education because we would really like to inspire some young teachers to like teach well, <laughs> I guess. So, so yeah. And so can I just ask like, what inspired you? Because you came up with the theme of education. And so can I just ask like, what inspired you to, to go that way for the conference? Mm -hmm. A lot of it actually came from our last conference, uh, which was about business. And uh, like, I think the conference was big success, but I also felt that a lot of our students were not that connected to it because it was something too far from their reach and something that they don't really have experiences with. So I was thinking it should be something that you are experiencing right now, something that you have a lot of insight. So something that will be easier for you to talk about and to imagine and so on and since you are also experiencing the effect good for teaching i think you can have a big say in the topic so that's why no i just i wanted to say that like the conference has been really like like the planning has been really great i've been really like enjoying it and like the way how you like lead us but like you kind of like leave it up to us does that make sense you're like the ceo of a company that like shows up here and there to just like guide us in the right push way. Us, yeah push us in the right directions but yeah. like mainly it's just like us like six managers who just like sit there um, and do the main like decisions and stuff so that's been really cool And that's because we're great managers. Yeah. Well, well and I think that's that's one of the right ways. Yes, girls. And that's that's one of the ways how you how you can educate people right way. Because like you have to trust them. Yeah. If you don't trust them, then you never support them correctly. And uh, I have seen so many great things that not just you, but all of our students did, or students in general that I had. So, like, I know that, like, students can handle big things. The only thing they need is, it's, yeah, a little bit of leadership, but a lot of trust. And then they can perform. But if you don't give them the trust, they will always be blocked by a teacher that's not believing in them. And that's, that's a bit, because then they, they also cannot learn. We asked about like qualities in a teacher. And so what do you think that uh, you as a teacher can work with l like literally any type of student with like any kinds of qualities? Like even if the student just like is not interested and just like does not want to do something. Do you think that you, there's still hope for him? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that you can, like, you can like change his kind mind. of, yeah, like shape his mindset and like, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess that's it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. 
um, like the, the very first thing you learn either as a teacher or a coach is if someone doesn't want to do something, you like, unless you use like force, you don't have like means how to make him do something. Yeah. So definitely uh, like students have to be interested at least a little bit to be like willing to work and then then you can somehow motivate them or you can add to it. But if they just don't want to, even if you would be like, I don't know who, you, you couldn't change it. So that's that's the very first thing. And then uh, like, honestly, each teacher has some preferences. Like some students, you just understand them better. And uh, you see that like the work with them is more like smooth and easier for you. And some students doesn't fit that well with your personality and then it's harder to work with them. That doesn't mean that you don't try, but you might see like if, if there is a choice, maybe this student would be better with some other teacher because they just would fit each other better. So I know that some students work better with me and some students work better with someone else. So like if I will have a choice or I could offer a student that I know is maybe not the happiest student with me, an alternative that I know better for him, I would do so. Because the personal fit is also important. And uh, both students and teachers should have a, at least some choice to, to make when they feel it's not working together. That's like, that doesn't mean any of them is bad or, or anything like that. It's just mean like, it's, it's like a team. Sometimes a few people can match very well and they can create a very great team. And sometimes their personality are just not a good fit together. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, that's really good. That's yeah. You give us like such good answers. <laughs> yes, it's really nice. You give us a lot of good content. That's that's great. Definitely. Okay. So so the last sorry the last topic is of course online learning because it's something you know so current and stuff yeah and i feel like we always talk about that how we as students deal with it how we like cope with it and click with it and i wanted to ask you how you're like right. dealing with it. dealing with it mm -hmm. well there are like two uh, two levels how can I answer this? One level is very personal and one is more like professional as a teacher. Which one do you want to hear? Both? I mean, yeah, both would be great. But, but if you don't want to, it's, if you don't it's fine. Want you can just pick one. Okay, so I will start with the personal one. Um, so I'm an extroverted personality and I also play can can read emotions from like I'm also like emotional and can like or like I could say empathic a lot. And it works just fine when people are in the same room with me. So I think I can quite well read the mood of the room and the people that are there, like how how I can adapt, how I can make it better for them if they are tired or excited or whatever. And with the distant learning, when I have just dreams and sometimes students are not feeling confident to share even like their videos with me, it's so hard, you know? So, so I feel I am like losing a lot of uh, what makes the teaching so like enjoyable for, for me. And uh, and also, like this time of the year is is not my most favorite time of the year. Like the the weather is like not very nice, and everything is gray and and so on. So also, like from the personal point of view, it has been not really the best time for myself. So it made it even like harder. 
But on the other hand, I think I learned a lot from our spring experience when we just felt more like, okay, let's let's just somehow try to do this. And and uh, now we had like more experiences, we took it more serious. Uh, we tried to learn from our like mistakes before. So I think we, as a school, so like all our teachers managed to kind of like make it better and I hope like quite fine as much as it can be. And I'm also like having more meetings with my students, which is uh, helping a lot. It's at least some contact with them. So it always cheer me up. Okay, and you mentioned like the cameras, like some students won't even like turn on their cameras. So how do you like, how do you feel about that? Like uh, what it's, I mean, I imagine it must be like really hard to just like teach like someone you don't even see. Like, is it like, does it feel like you're just talking to yourself and do you ever just go, this is so ridiculous. Like, I just, I can't anymore. This is like, no, I'm done. Bye. Yeah, like sometimes it feels awkward. Like when you really talk to black screens and you don't know if anybody is even listening to you. Um, like I enjoy the most meetings where most people have their cameras on. It really helps me and, and makes me feel much better about the meeting. On the other hand, I respect the fact that not everybody is feeling really confident about their like videos. So I don't want to push them towards some like fields that they really don't feel like comfortable and I don't want them to be stressed about the meetings. So I try to ask if like people could turn their cameras on and there is always someone who does that, so that helps. So that's kind of like a way in the middle, you know. I feel like the video calls sometimes turn into a pad show fashion show you know because sometimes like the students bring their cats or dogs and it oh, just yeah. turns into a really fun so so yeah I think that's that's the funny thing and that's the great thing about the cameras I, I know like some of you feel sometimes like uh shy about like the, their environments and it, it's it's a pity because I think it's always great to see parts of of like yeah, either it's it's your pet. So again, we go back towards your lives and your interests. So yeah, you have a great cat. Oh, I love cats as well. And and you know we have something to connect, or uh, or a dog, or fishes, or whatever. Or you have a big library behind you. Or Katie was cooking or baking last time, and and she also felt like shy about it. You know, I think it was great that like. We we saw something from from her life, yeah. And it's it's great that we have not just a professional level to connect, but also something more personal. Okay. And do you think that other than this, are there any other uh, benefits like that uh, online learning brings? Um. In general, I think yes. Because uh, a lot of teachers had to teach completely different and they had to start to use technologies, look for ways how to keep students interested or how to connect with them. So basically they didn't have any other choice than to become a little bit more modern. So uh, if nothing else, when, when we at the beginning talk about like how education didn't change for like hundreds of years. Now it had to change because there was no other way. And every time there is a change, it, it allows you to see what you're doing from a bigger perspective and start to think about it. 
And I think this is the, the benefit that the distant learning or online education can bring to us, that more teachers will start to think more about what they are doing and how they are doing it. And also maybe some, some head of schools and uh, like leaders in education will also start to think about, isn't something wrong here? Should we maybe do it differently? And if, if really there is something good about like online learning, I think it will be the change of perspective. Do you think that like the quality of, of learning is worse because of online learning like are we less pre like do we know less because of online learning does that make sense like are we getting less education yeah like are we like, getting like less knowledge and less skill because of like online learning honestly i don't know like i think it's it's a very deep question and from the first, like, very superficial point of view, you would say, uh, yes, students learn less. But that's when you think about the content of the class directly. But when you, when you think about it in, like, more general ways, um, like, what, what, what students do when they are not on their screens? They have much more time, and, and some of you started to to learn something else to profit from this time. Some of you just felt like lost at the beginning, and or maybe mo most of you, and you you had to figure out how can you handle this as well, and you had to maybe create a schedule or like a way how how you will like access this whole learning yeah and most of you did it alone or maybe with some of your classmates or your friends so basically you took more responsibility for your learning and within that i think a lot of you learned a lot maybe you learned a lot about yourselves some of some of the students learned that they they can manage working like this a lot and it they are even happy with, with it because they can manage their own time better. And some students learn that they are very poor in this and they just prefer more when they can meet people physically and when there is someone who is helping them with the schedule and so on. So also from the personal point of view, I think if, if the students had at least a little bit of self-like reflection, they learn about themselves yes i agree i think i mean i know that i uh, i actually kind of like distant learning because i think it like gives me i mean sometimes I, i'm a little bored and i don't know what to do with my time and sometimes i can't like manage my time correctly but i think like it gave me so much more space to kind of like explore what like I wanna, you know, for example, like do in the future because I've been like very like uh, hesitant about like where I'm heading, and all of this really helped me to to kind of center myself and and yeah, does that make sense? I feel like nothing makes sense <laughs> that I say, but yeah, I hope that makes sense. Oh, Teresa, why do you think so? I don't know, I feel like I always get so like caught up in, in, in what I'm saying and I like kind of, I don't know, it's, I'm just, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, you, I think you're like more worried than, than it's necessary, yeah. It always makes sense and I think what you, uh, what you need to learn is to keep, when you're talking, like keep one level when you follow what you're saying you know a little bit of attention that like you are in your like emotions in your ideas and everything but you still keep a little bit of your attention a little bit higher okay what am i still talking about yeah does it connect still together and then you will be all fine okay yeah, I feel like I kind of like always get 
yeah I like stop focusing for some reason I have trouble with that but that's just like <laughs> it's fine <laughs> uh, I don't think it's a focus I think it's more that you focus to like deep in just one point and and the problem is that you lost your attention on that higher level you know and that's when you lose it yeah so i don't think you have problems with focus just that you kind of lost a little bit the the overview of what's going on and that's just a skill that you can easily learn nothing to worry about yeah i hope so <laughs> okay anything else you want to ask uh, I can't think of anything right now. Okay, so Miss Eva, we really appreciate that you took the time to come talk with us today. It's been yeah. really awesome. You're a great teacher, and oh, maybe can I just one last question? Okay, <laughs> okay, I just <laughs> no because I just felt like this is our Christmas uh, episode, right? Oh, okay. so we should probably ask about your Christmas, like is if there's a tradition. Mm -hmm do something you do every Christmas and it's like yeah Christmas <laughs> um yeah I have a, a little like family tradition to be like for for us just for like my family like my sons and uh, like the closest family members we never give the presents under the Christmas tree Although I love that part, but we don't do it for our family. But we hide them in our house, like in, in many different places. Like, you know, the weirder is the better. So, and then we play this uh, this game when you like say, like, it's very cold here when the person is like really looking for a, like at some wrong place. And then you say, well, okay, it's a little bit harder and harder until they find it. And, and kids just love it. That's, that's nice. That's awesome. I want to try that. I think we should try it. I feel like I something. wouldn't find my presents though. <laughs> yeah, but I. It's like it makes Christmas that much longer. I mean, yeah, but if I and you have more time to like process, like. But I mean, I wouldn't find them, and I I can't even be the person who hides them because I would forget where I hid them. So <laughs> this would just not be the solution for me. Yeah, it, it's a good idea to write it down, actually, I figure out, because then you know where you're headed. In. But uh, it, it's not difficult to find them if the person who hide them remembers where they are, <laughs> because, like, you have this, this clue, so if you are looking on the wrong place, they will, they will, like, guide you somewhere else, so, and it's fun. Yeah, it sounds really fun. Okay, so yeah. is that all? Yeah, that's all for me. <laughs> okay, so what I said here earlier, thank you for taking the time to be with us here today. It's been really awesome. And and yeah, I hope... Uh, I hope you enjoyed it with yeah, us. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed well. it with us. And it wasn't too... Uh, I don't Intense know. and confusing. Yeah. Like before you said something wrong about it, I really enjoy it a lot and I'm happy that you also were interested in talking to me. So thank you as well. Okay, great. Okay. So enjoy well, your Christmas and yeah. and see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> Have a happy Christmas break. Relax, enjoy, stay healthy with all your family. I hope everyone is kind of handling present situation is it okay yeah it's okay yeah what yeah. okay so i hope you're all fine for christmas and you can just enjoy it thank okay. you thank you so much yeah you too yeah thank you bye bye, bye.